Hey, what's up everyone? This is Ill Factor from BeatAcademy.com. And in this video, I'm gonna share some music production tips and techniques while recreating the beat in Kylie Minogue's Real Groove. Now this is gonna be the remix version by Studio 2054, which also features Dua Lipa. So let me go ahead and play you the finished product. Now, before we start recreating this beat, I just want to remind you that you can download this Ableton Live file so that you can follow along. And if you're not using Ableton Live, you can also have access to the sounds that I'm using in this video. Just click the link below in the description box. And if you're looking for professional guidance with your music production to help you take your next step forward with producing your own music, I would love to help you any way I can. Just visit beatacademy.com for more information. So. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so this song has a throwback disco type of vibe to it, and we're gonna focus on the drums. And I'm gonna start with finding a loop that comes close to the overall groove, and we're gonna start at 120 BPMs for our project. And the reason why I'm starting with the loop and then working backwards is because the loop will kind of give me a more of a, a solid um, overall consistent structure, and I can find individual elements such as uh, kick, snare, and hi-hat things to beef up the loop rather than the other way around. So. Here I have a loop. And now what I'm gonna do is just kinda um, create the groove with a live drum set on top of that. So let's go over here to using uh, Addictive Drums 2. And there's a drum kit setting here that I really like. And um, it's called a Vintage Kit. We'll go right over here, Vintage Dry. And we'll go ahead and choose Disco Dirt right on the money. And so let's go ahead and draw in our pattern. So let's look for our kick drum. Okay. And this will be easy just to kind of put our kick on every quarter note beat. So for that, I'm going to extend our grid by hitting command two. And I'll hit the full button, just so I can focus on that one sound and draw that in there. And one thing I want to do is make sure by holding the command key, I can change the velocity up and down of these individual sounds. So that second kick will lower the velocity a little bit. And the same thing with beat four as well. What that's gonna do is, that's gonna give a different variation of velocity so that the snare that we'll put on beats two and four can be a little bit dominant. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's find our snare. There, all right. And then let's go ahead and put our hi-hat pattern. Okay, I'm gonna decrease my grid. So I have a... Same thing here with the velocity too. I'm gonna to go to the first hi-hat, raise the velocity there. Second hi-hat, lower the velocity. And I'll raise the second velocity here just slightly and lower this down. And now let's duplicate this loop so we go from a one bar loop to a two bar loop. So we can raise the velocity of these snares. There you go. And we'll do the same thing here. And I also want to accent that first kick as well. So velocity plays a big part, especially when you're um, programming drums with acoustic with an acoustic drum set. So we'll just raise this up a little bit. And I'm now gonna go ahead and copy this over. So the second drum kick, that, that kick drum there, it's there, but I also want the snare to be a lot more evident um, there as well. So, and thing too, some, some acoustic drum kits will have, you know, different variations of how the hi-hats uh, are both open and closed and how they're hit. So I don't wanna have the same exact uh, close hi-hat sound. So we can go ahead and add some variation here. So all these play a big part 
into coming up with a more authentic feel with acoustic drums. Now let's go ahead and grind this up with an overdrive plugin. And one of my favorite compressors to use on uh, acoustic drum kits, especially with the addictive drums, is the DBX 160 plugin. So I'll go over here and I'll look for that and just put that on there. So putting that with the loop that we had originally. So that creates the body of, you know, that's filling up a lot of the body of that top end loop. Now we can support and beef up the kick and the snare and add a separate clap to actually give more width and a little bit more of that flam type of feel. And I can use a, a drum rack for this. All right, so I've got a drum rack loaded with just a couple sounds, a kick, a snare, and a clap. And let's go ahead and draw in our pattern here. So let's use our pencil tool and extend our grid. Here we go. And put our snare and clap on beats two and four. And what I want to do is make sure that I slightly nudge this clap a little bit behind the snare drum. So by holding the command button, we can nudge this off the grid. And nudging things off the grid is such an important thing. Um, and I'm gonna go back to the live drums here, and everything is right on the grid. It's robotic, it's just too stiff. So what I wanna do is take the groove from the loop that we did, and this is why it's, uh, I'm using the loop instead, this loop here that we started with. I wanna take the groove from this, because uh, if I look at it, I know that we're not, right on, we've got the hi-hat off a little bit and the clap off a little bit. So I'm gonna take the groove from this, meaning that Ableton Life will extract the groove, the timing, the feel of this loop. So we'll go ahead, right click and hit extract grooves. And then I wanna apply that groove to my acoustic drum MIDI pattern that we created here. So I'm gonna head over here to this um, groove box and, um, and then select the groove that I just extracted. But before doing that, open up the groove pool and just make sure if I wanted to mirror the velocity of that audio loop, if I wanted the same velocity to be applied uh, to the MIDI of my acoustic drums, I could do all that inside the groove pool here. I can say match the velocity by 100%. Right now I'm just focused on the timing. So over here, choose the groove that we just extracted and hit commit. And that's gonna nudge now this uh, a little bit. You could see we have um, some of the hi-hats a little early. We have that clap a little early now. It kind of brought the humanistic life and placed it into my acoustic drums. So snare might be a little too ahead. So I'm, and it's doing that because the clap in the loop was really ahead. It was a flammy type of clap. So let me just move that back a little bit move that over and now let's see what it all sounds like together with these three. Now the new clap that we added, a lot of ambience there. So here's what we can do. We could either just shorten the length of that sample. But you see how it doesn't feel right? Here's what you wanna do. You wanna go ahead, extend it, but yet go to the classic mode so that you have your envelope, your attack, decay, sustain, release and lower the sustain down. And that's gonna help eliminate, if you've got a drum hit sample that maybe there's a lot of reverb on there and it just feels unnatural, if you run into that, use your sustain knob to eliminate that feel. So bring the sustain down. Without it. So that reverb that's already in the sample is just, it's lingering way too much. So bring the sustain down to get the right type of uh, feel. And now let's beef up the kick drum. So I'm gonna go over here, go to the kick, and let's look for a saturator plugin. Eliminate this. We'll go to saturator and just change it from analog clip to soft sign and just give it some drive. So 
So that means I'm going to go to my acoustic drum kit, get my EQ, and just carve out some space so that our new kick can beef up without getting messy with some of the low end that's coming from this kick here. So I'm going to go to right here, this low pass, and... So once I've got that pattern down, I'm just going to transfer these clips over to my arrangement with you. And I can do that by just clicking this clip, hitting the tab button, and then dragging that over here. So I've got them all laid out here. What I'm going to do is at the turnaround of every four bars, we have that double clap, clap, clap that happens. So I'm just going to edit the clap from the loop to, to put it there. Um, and then I'm going to also do the same thing for the claps that we added. So go here and then just lower that grid right there as well. And I want to make sure that I'm getting the, I want to make sure that I'm getting that little flam. You can see there, I'm, I'm chopping that off. So extend that and extend that there. All right, now let's process these drums. Uh, since we're combining the loop, the live drum kit, and our kick and snare, it might be good to compress. And the reason why is because I want it to kind of sandwich all those uh, individual tracks together so it's a bit more glued and cohesive. And then I want to add some of that warm texture as if we sampled this break that we just created. So definitely RC20 comes to mind. Add some of the warmth, the crackle, the texture, and uh, we'll just take it from there. So let's do a little bit of EQing here. I'm going to get the EQ8. Just take away some low end and maybe some of the boxiness that I'm hearing. So let's go ahead. Right there. And just take a little bit of that out. All right. Now let's go ahead and I'll use the glue compressor. And we're just doing light compression here because I don't want to kill transients. So I'm just trying to glue these tracks together. So I'm going crazy and then scale it back. Now, if you're having a hard problem noticing the difference, think of the back end of that snare. Listen to the back end of the snare, the body of that snare when the compressor's off. Um, it breathes a lot more. So I'll just take this off here. So you just got to be careful not to throw compression just for the sake of putting compression. I want it, it to be a little tight and the body of that snare to breathe a little more. And that's what this is doing. So I'm going to leave it there. Now let's go ahead and add, uh, I'm going to look for this plugin here called Spiff. And this is going to help. This is a great transient designer. Uh, one of my favorite plugins to use to just bring out the smack of anything, but particularly with drums. And it's so loaded with amazing stuff. It's made by Oaken Sound. And um, this plugin here, I, I totally slept on for a while, but then I started using it. And I was like, wow, it's amazing. So what we're able to do is we can dial in frequency wise and specifically make sure that if I wanted more punch or more transients from that specific frequency, we can uh, filter it out here and then increase the amount of transient um, that we're accentuating here. We can go ahead and give more transients to the low end, more kick punch, uh, more hi-hat punch. So it's really cool. Uh, at first, just by default, I just start cranking up the depth. This is going to determine how much of boosting. Then you can also do cutting, you can go the reverse way where you're actually eliminating the transients. We'll talk about how cool that is because you can actually use this as an effect to create interesting loops. The thing with these disco type loops and a lot of, um, you know, disco or any type of EDM that's in this type of land that's got these type of drums, they are punchy and they, they're dry and punchy. And so I love this plugin to get that result. Here's a cut. We can just. And you could use the cut mode. Let's say if you have a drum loop that has a, a big heavy kick and a snare presence, 
you can then dial it and focus. You know, I want to eliminate a lot of that kick loop and turn it into just a top end loop, uh, as opposed to using an EQ, which you're stripping away some of the low end for you. You don't want to like eliminate a lot of the low end. You just want to, you know, uh, take away some of the immediate transits from that. So that's where this plugin really comes into play. It's really cool. We'll go to boost again. And you can dial in the frequency. So that's where we hear a lot of the top thump of the kick and the clap, the, like the lower end of the clap. I like a lot of that. That's really evident in some of the disco drums. Okay, this is without it. Okay, now let's add some of that texture here. We're gonna go into RC20. Add some retro color here. And obviously we're getting the, the vinyl crackle that's gonna be added here. But we don't wanna make sure we're killing all that low end. So just put that all the way down and we can roll off some of the high end here. And then I'm going to use the drum bus plugin, but uh, in Ableton Live. But I'm not going to be using a lot of the drive or the crunch or even the transient designer here. I'm just going to use this for some subharmonic frequency. I'm going to use the boom button to bring back a lot of the low end. So I'm going to start at zero, um, raise the decay, bring the boom up, and then start uh, mixing in and blending in the wet signal till I get a nice place. Cool. Let's listen to the drums without all these plugins here. I'm going to just bypass it. And then let's create some depth by sending some of these drums over to a reverb. And uh, since we're on a disco vibe, I want to go ahead and use IK Multimedia's Sunset Sound Reverb and just put it in a nice live room. So we'll go with the live room setting here. Choose one of these cool studios. Let's just go one by one. I like the sound of that. It sounds great. We'll just eliminate some of the... So a lot of low end creeping through. So we'll use this to, to take away some of that low end. Just even with the send, little little under halfway, just makes such a big difference. And reverb goes, you know, short live room reverb like this where their drums go a long way of creating that depth. All right, now let's focus in on the bass line. So we're still in this disco mindset. So I'm going for an electric bass and I'm gonna use IK Multimedia's Moto bass because we have a bunch of different models we can choose from. I'm gonna choose the 70s P bass. Definitely narrows it down to that type of sound. And I'm going to do a couple of adjustments here, but let's go ahead and take a listen to the rift first. So I'll solo that. And here are the notes. Now, one thing to keep in mind, just as we did with the acoustic drums, Live instrumentation such as strings, bass, guitar, things like that, they also rely heavily on velocity adjustments. If you've just written or drew in the notes um, of bass, uh, bass notes here, you will still get this exact velocity. And so we have to make sure that we've got a nice dynamic range velocity wise, because when you have a real bass player that's playing, not every note is at the same exact volume. And so we also need to not only move some notes off and on the grid by adjusting them and moving them like that by holding the command button, but we can add some ghost notes here and lower the velocity so that they're not as prominent 
as the note before or after. So these notes here, these tiny little notes, I'm gonna make sure that the velocity is just a little bit off or just lower, almost to the point where you don't hear them, but it goes a long way. So I'll, we'll take this off and you, you can hear the difference here. Let's put this back in. See, doo -doo, that's really, those are those small details that go a long way. So you can add some notes in between the main accented notes as like ghost notes or grace notes that you can add there. You can see that I, I've put them throughout all these little locations and adjust the velocity of those notes and the bass line will feel a lot more realistic and it'll have more of a groove overall pocket. So. Now that we've got the bass, I'm gonna, now to help the bass fit a little bit more in the pocket with the drums, I'm gonna add some side chain compression. So bring the compressor right onto the bass track, open the side chain option, and I want the kick drum to be the source of our side chain. So we'll go to a drum rack here, which is where the kick drum is at, and let's go ahead and choose our kick drum. And now let's layer this bass. We're gonna make a duplicate copy of this. So Command D. And what we're gonna do is, this is gonna be a lot more distorted. We're gonna add some effects on there to kind of widen it up. So we will have the first bass, our low regular bass. And this one is purposely going to have all the low end out with some distortion. So it really helps cut through the mix a little bit. So let's eliminate some of that low end. Now, before we do that, Let's use a pedal. I'm using the pedal before the EQ so I can add the harmonics to all the low end and I can just filter that out with the EQ. And then we'll use a chorus right after that EQ to widen this up. and a little bit more drastic on the side chain for this one. All right, now let's add another layer to that bass line. And when you listen to the reference, there's this nice like whoop, 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 like this swelling and filtered in uh, synth that's kind of sitting on top of the bass line. And so it's almost got like also a phaser uh, vibe to it as well. So I'm gonna head over here and I'm gonna use uh, Serum for this, this uh, third party plugin here. And we're gonna start by just focusing in on our first oscillator set to uh, the sawtooth here. And here. So under the unison, I'm gonna widen this up by giving it about three to four voices. Let's just, let's do four. And let's put a second oscillator and put this uh, octave lower. All right, and then what I'll do is we're gonna route these two oscillators over to our filter. So let's turn our filter on and put A and B. So if I was to click the cutoff filter knob and just go up and down in my own timing, I'd get that effect that I'm looking for. But what I wanna do is map the LFO to the cutoff filter so that it's doing it on its own. So just by clicking the LFO knob here, you can drag and drop that to whatever parameter in Serum that you want to modulate. In this case, the cutoff filter. And now let's lower this so it's not as dramatic. And then we can just put it a little bit behind the grid. And give it a little bit of filter drive here. No, that's cool. That's giving it that swell effect that we were uh, looking for. So I'll put, make sure to put this on mono. And now let's add some processing under the effects section, add some distortion, a little bit of tape saturation here to warm it up. And that thing that I kept hearing in the back of my mind was a phaser type thing. So we'll put the phaser on here. And I'll put it to BPM so it syncs with the project. Let's see what that sounds like 
with, uh, oh, actually, I'll just take also the side chain from our first base, just holding option, dragging that onto um, this as well. Now let's check it out with the other bases. All right, next we have these uh, Disco Stringfall samples that I found on my hard drive. I actually just hit the Command F in the search uh, field in my browser and took a risk. This, maybe I might have something called Disco String. So I typed in Disco String and actually found a cool little fall here. So I'm going to put that in at the very beginning of our uh, phrase. But I'm also going to hold the Option key, create another track underneath that, and put this a whole octave higher. And then I'm going to add some of the tremolo strings that we could hear in the turnaround part here. And that'll help give us a nice transition and turnaround from each of the phrase. And then let's add a crash on our downbeat as well. And use that to actually help accentuate and build tension on the turnaround. We'll make a copy of that, hit the R button to reverse it. And then just have it the regular version on the downbeat there. All right, now something I want to do to add some texture all around to the overall groove is maybe put some background noise, maybe like a crowd talking or something like that, that I can kind of just tuck away. And this actually adds some really nice texture to everything that we got going on. So I'll just go in my search, uh, uh, thing here in the browser search thing and just go to all results and see what comes up with a uh, crowd oh, and we'll use this drag it into our session view you might just want to go ahead and loop that part right there so we'll just keep that looping and then we just balance it and bring it in raise uh, automate maybe some volume to go up and down every now and then so let's see what it sounds like with everything in Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was helpful, encouraging, and inspiring in any way. And as my gift to you for watching this video, I'd love to send you a sample pack loaded with construction kits, loops, one shots, sound effects, and these are yours absolutely free, and they're 100% royalty free. What does that mean? It means that you can use these sounds in your music, in your projects, and share that music with the rest of the world, and they're absolutely yours. You can get this by clicking the link below in the description box or visiting beatacademy.com slash pack. Also, if you're looking for professional guidance and helping you produce the music that you've been wanting to make, be sure to visit beatacademy.com and I'll help you out in any way that I can. Be sure to subscribe and like this video so that YouTube will continue to show you more videos from my channel to help you take your next step with your music production. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.